Welcome back to TFAC Talks. I'm Andy Millard, and this is where we visit with artists and arts-oriented people in and around the Tryon area. I want to take just a moment here at the beginning to give a word of thanks to Ginny Plume and the Plume Family Foundation. The Plume Family Foundation has been a loyal supporter of the Tryon Fine Arts Center for years, and this year they sponsored our Spring Amphitheater series. Of course, we were unable to have the series, but Ginny and the Foundation have continued to support us, and we want to publicly express our deep appreciation for everything they do for TFAC and for the entire community. And now, for our guest, Eric Olson. He's a photographer and videographer, but those descriptions do not do him justice. He is incredibly talented. He has the eye of a unique artist, and he is dedicated to constant improvement and keeping up with the very latest developments in his craft. And even better, he is one swell guy. <laughs> uh, full disclosure, Eric is a great dear friend of mine, and I love him like a brother. So, Eric, welcome to TFAC Talks. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a privilege and an honor to be here. You know, TFAC Talks is a great program. I've been watching it since the beginning of time, and I kept thinking, when is Andy <laughs> going to give me a call and have me on the program? Well, he finally called me, and here I am. Thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful program. Well, it's great to have you here. <laughs> and like a lot of artists, your art is your life and your life is your art. I mean, you know, I know that you spend not necessarily every waking hour, but a lot of time on photography and videography. So tell us a little bit about what you do and how it kind of infuses so much of your life. That's, that's true. I uh, <clears throat> almost spend every waking moment with a camera one way or another. I have cameras everywhere. My work is very diversified from real estate photos to real estate films to event photography and videos to horse shows. That's something I did many years ago for many years. Portrait shoots, headshots, uh, horse portraits. The uh, Tryon International Equestrian Center had me over for the 2018 FEI World Equestrian Games. That was a challenge and, and a privilege to be there. I uh, even had a chance to fly the drone over the equestrian center during that event, which was quite exciting. And uh, so today, what keeps me going today is mainly real estate photos and real estate films. During the pandemic? Right, because people are still listing homes for sale. I guess a lot of folks have the extra time now and uh, figure, well, you know, the dishwasher is filled up. Let's sell the house. <laughs> um, it's like the ashtray is full. Let's sell the car or trade it in. Of course, during the pandemic, we have less live events. And that keeps me from covering some of those. Less for shows, less, less live events, as you well know. But you've, you've done, like you say, such a variety of different things. And it really puts you in touch with so many different aspects of the community. And that's got to keep it kind of lively and interesting, right? It does. No, no, no two days are alike. I never know what to expect. That's what makes my job so interesting and so exciting. I, I wake up in the morning and I'm just so thrilled and excited that I just can't wait to get back to work and do what I like to do. I've sort of turned my passion into my profession. And, and I'm very fortunate that I can say that, that I'm actually uh, making a living doing the things I really enjoy doing. Yeah. I mentioned in the intro that you keep up with all the latest in video and photography. And one form that that takes is uh, I have noticed that you have a love of gear and you and I will sometimes geek out on you'll you'll send me a link and say this is this new camera or whatever. And boy, you should really buy this so I can try it out or whatever. And uh, so you love all that coolest equipment. It, uh, and so I want I wonder if you maybe have anything there with you today that uh, you might be able to share with us. Of course, of course. <laughs> Folks, of course, know that this is a drone. I have uh, used this quite a bit, uh, especially for uh, real estate uh, photos and films. And it gives me a whole new perspective. This thing is a game changer. This is the fourth one I think I'm on right now. Since technology changes so quickly, 
it almost like, you know, every six months something new comes out and I got to have the latest, I got to have the greatest. So the drone comes in handy because with this, I can be as high as 400 feet off of the ground, which is great. Another um, wonderful tool that has really been a game changer for me, especially for the real estate films, is, is a gimbal. And what is a gimbal? What so is a gimbal, because, Eric? Yeah, it's, it's sort of like a steady cam. You know, back in the early 70s, Garrett Brown invented the steady cam. If you ever watch Rocky and you watch the scene where Rocky's running up these steps, that was Garrett Brown on his homemade steady cam thingy, which stabilizes the camera. We don't have enough time for me to get into it. I would love to talk about that. But what I use instead of a steady cam, which can be very heavy and very expensive, I have this little thing here. This is a this is a gimbal. And it allows me to put a camera on, on this platform right here and it stabilizes and smooths the camera's um, a position and it lets me sort of fly through. So as you walk these. along and carry the gimbal with the camera on it, it keeps right. it kind of level it and It keeps smooth. it level, it keeps it smooth and you know, I can run next to you, I don't know. Uh, you might remember a while back where I was doing a video where you were running and I was mm -hmm. running backwards with you, trying to get a, a nice steady shot. And I had one of those steady cam rigs, and it was just it was uh, like it a was, just giant thing attached, like yeah, a you vest strap attached it on and, to your. And you have this this arm, and you put the weights on it, and you have this stick, and you got. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. So this and this really is is a game changer. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things, another thing that I appreciate about you so much is your dedication to. You know, collaboration, uh, working with other people, helping other people. Me, for example. Folks, um, most of what I know about videography, I learned from this guy. Uh, a lot of artists sort of keep their talents to themselves, but um, Eric does not do that. He doesn't jealousy, jealously guard his secrets. He, he loves helping people and working collaboratively on projects. And so the question is, why are you saying so dang nice to everybody? I, I, you, know, you don't have to be nice to be able to share your passion. I mean, I, I try to be nice because if I'm nice to people, if I'm nice to you, chances are you might be nice to me back. That's just the, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. I mean, with you, for instance, I mean, I saw your earlier work and I thought mm, you might need a little bit of help so I can literally sit here and say, I've raised you from a puppy when it comes to videos and things like that. And you have come a long way. But you also do the things like you work with other people and make these small independent films. And Oh, yes. Uh, yes. I forgot to mention, I also uh, work on um, independent filmmaking, narrative, <laughs> uh, short films, feature films. I have worked as a uh, boom operator, sound mixer, to a, a director of photography, to a camera operator slash director of photography, uh, productions assistant, you name it, I've done it. And, and that's kind of cool because that's where I really, really want to be eventually is to be on a film set. I think that's the most fun I've had and having. Uh, although it doesn't pay much or sometimes it doesn't pay at all, <laughs> but uh, we do it because we love it. Uh, that's the only reason we're doing it. We're not doing it to be, to get rich or anything. And they make a lot of independent films around here, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Try on. Yes. We, in fact, I, I shot a, a couple of short films in this area um, with uh, some folks in the Greenville area. I've uh, done some work with some folks up in the uh, Asheville area. We've uh, completed a feature here just recently uh, with some folks from Asheville uh, that was shot up in, uh, in Brevard. But anything and everything I do has something to do with a camera. Kind of grew up with a camera, you know? I mean, it, let's talk I about remember, that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you know, growing up in Germany, um, I was born there at a very early age. <laughs> I, uh, I, I followed my dad around and, and, you know, just always trying to see what he would look like, but I could never really tell because he always had his face covered with a camera. He was always taking pictures of us kids. So that ended up, of course, in my blood, is in the genes, I guess you can say. So anytime he would get himself a new camera of some type, he would give me his old stuff to play with. He even took me downstairs into the, uh, to the basement, to his dark room, as he was developing his, his own black and whites. And I learned at a very early age yeah. that those chemicals did not smell any didn't smell good. <laughs> but anyway, so I got the bug at a very yeah. early age. And when people ask me, how long have you been doing this? I said, well, since about when I was about six, maybe seven years old. But then you ended up in 
the foothills of North Carolina. That's right. And how did that I, happen from Germany that to here? I know it's um, it's a mystery. Um, <laughs> No, my, my dad retired and we chose uh, the east coast of North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, to uh, settle in. And so How old were you at that in. time? I was 17. Okay. 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> and so, um, mm-hmm. and so I uh, ended up working at a television station in Wilmington, North Carolina. It was an ABC affiliate. And I uh, worked there for seven or eight years, became chief photographer. And then I was an opening at WLOS in Asheville. I took that job. I got a job there as a news photographer. I did that for three years and decided to do my own thing and just walked away from corporate America and opened up my own business and started taking pictures. And I all started that with horse shows, basically showing up at horse shows, taking pictures and putting them on the, on the internet for people to see yeah. them and actually buy them. And so that's how I started making my living doing that. Well, you have done great at it. You continue to improve and up your game and uh, every time, Almost every time we talk, you've got some other kind of clever, new, interesting thing that you're doing. And um, in a lot of ways, you have, you've, you're have you like a big kid, uh, which is one of the things that's, that's great about you. You've continued to do the thing that you love. And like you say, turn it into a profession. A profession. Never stop learning. You will always keep learning. And it yeah. keeps your mind fresh. Well, that, my dear viewer, is why I wanted you to spend a little time with my friend Eric Olson. To learn more about Eric and to see more of his amazing, amazing work, go to ericolsonpictures.com. It is a great website with some stunningly beautiful imagery, and I highly recommend it. And of course, to see what we're happening at the Tryon, to see what we are happening to see what we are doing at the Tryon Fine Arts Center, visit tryonarts.org. Eric, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. And thanks again to the Plume Family Foundation and our wonderful TFAC sponsors for their continued support. We need our sponsors and our supporters now more than ever. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get through this together. And for all of us at the Tryon Fine Arts Center, I'm Andy Millard, and we'll see you next time. Take care.